Spinning, spinning, spinning. Okay, I'm live. Hi, guys. Hey, Sandy. Good to see you here. Hi, Susan. All right. Why does it sound extra echoey in here today? I hope this microphone is sounding okay to you guys. All right, so here we are today to talk about black tourmaline. You know, it's one of my favorite crystals. It's the one that I most often have close to me. Um, so we're talking black tourmaline healing properties, correspondences, and meanings, and some very unique scientific properties that are very special to black tourmaline. So you can learn how to effectively work with one of the most powerful minerals out there, all right? I'm sure most of you have black tourmaline in your collection, so it's a good thing to learn about, right? Oh, good, so many of you are here. Good to see you here. Hey, Angie, our curriculum specialist, Angie, is here. All right, so who am I? If I just showed up in your feed, I'm Hibiscus Moon. I'm the founder of the Hibiscus Moon Crystal Academy, where we certify people as crystal healers and teach all aspects of working with crystals. And what we're going to discuss specifically today is the healing properties of black tourmaline so that you can use it effectively, like I said, its copper associations, some geology behind black tourmaline so that you know what to look for, you know what you're getting, you know how I feel about fakes, you know I'm always like on the rampage on that. So knowing some geology is good, is a good thing. And um, some black tourmaline physics like we discussed before so you can learn why it's such an efficient power stone. I'm also going to do a giveaway. I'm changing the cover on my book, not the book itself, but just getting a new cover. It really needs a, an update, a refresh. So these, if you have one, Crystal Grids, How and Why They Work, it's gonna become like a collector's edition, I guess. So I'm giving away three of these. Actually, it's my last three before the new cover comes out. Um, so I'm gonna give away three of them today, signed. Um, so to enter, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel. Just because you're here does not mean you're subscribed. So make sure you subscribe. And when you do, hit the little bell so that you're getting notifications when I put out a new video or I'm going live. Um, and you have to have commented on my last video on my channel. My last video was, um, FTC crackdown on crystal sellers. So that's what it was called. Um, if you already commented on it and you're subscribed to my channel, then you're already entered. But if you didn't, then run over there, comment, and um, I'll announce the winner here live at the end, okay? All right, question of the day. You know, I like to do question of the day. Whether you're watching this live or in the replay, do you consider black tourmaline to be a must have crystal? Because I have it on my top 10 must have crystal list. But do you consider that, you know, um, everybody's got a different opinion um, about everything. So just curious to see if you think it is. Now, if you click on the link in the description below, I recommend you do that. Have it open in a separate window. That's going to take you to my accompanying blog post to this topic where you can get more resources that I posted there. Lots of extra links that I posted there. And you can sign up for my newsletter where lots of extra goodies go out to my subscribers extra info, things I talk about there that I don't discuss in other places. Um, just kind of like what's going on in the crystal family unit. All right. And you know, I'm into crystal education. That's why I'm here today and educating our crystal family. And if you'd like to help me with that mission, I would really be really appreciative. And the way you do that is you like, comment, and share this video into in as many places as you can think of. Share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, share it just anywhere you like. Um, doing those actions tells YouTube to promote my video even more so other people get the information also. And again, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video or when I go live. All right, so black tourmaline, also known as shore. That's spelled S. C-H-O-R-L. Have you heard it called that? That was like kind of an older geological term, um, not used as much anymore, but it specifically is talking about black tourmaline. Some people say tourmaline, tour tourmaline, or tourmaline. <laughs> so it's our most common form of tourmaline. And it's one of, like I said, my one of my top 10 must-have crystals and one of the most popular in crystal healing in general. Why? 
Well, it's an ideal crystal for neutralizing what feels like negative energy to us. It's really good for that. It's great for purifying energy. It's an ideal grounder. So if you're looking for grounding energy, black tourmaline is, again, one to have in your toolbox. Great for energetic protection. Really good for lowering risks from electromagnetic frequency exposure, like sitting here in front of computers, devices, things like that. And it's an ideal stone to use if you are an empath or with empaths. I love black tourmaline, and this is my favorite piece that I always have around, really high quality, good piece, for its ability to transmute energy. If energy has a specific charge to it, it has, if it has a negative feel to it, this is excellent for bringing that energy back to neutral so that it feels good to us. And transmuting negative energy that people might just bring into a space just because of being the way that they are, they're not very awake, you know, and sometimes even those that consider themselves awake get into that place, right? None of us is perfect. Um, so transmuting that kind of energy when someone brings it, whether knowingly or unknowingly, into a space. Um, as an example, when I used to work in the classroom, for those of you that don't know, I used to be a science department chair and science teacher, and I taught physics to um, gifted students and um, teenagers. And generally, the teenagers didn't do this. It was it would be an adult usually that would come into the room and they would bring some junk with them, energetic junk. The students mostly, for the most part, would come in and just be a sheer joy. And adults, some adults would come in and just be a sheer joy. Some people would come in and be just neutral. Some people would come into almost a black cloud that you could visualize and you could definitely feel. And they would almost like suck the energy out of the space, right? Or actually infuse the energy of the space with this like, ugh, you know, yuck and stuck kind of energy. And black tourmaline was wonderful for keeping in the space and helping to neutralize that. So it's really good one for that. Um, I see, I, I'm looking over in the corner of my eye, I see a lot of questions. We are gonna do Q&A at the end, but I find if I stop and do Q&A while I'm delivering the content, I get really distracted, a bit ADD that way. So <laughs> I will get your questions at the end, unless you guys are just interacting with each other and I highly encourage that. So how do we use it as an electromagnetic field or shield for electromagnetic frequencies? Um, although it's a very popular choice, I even see it recommended in books where people recommend putting different types of silicates, different types of quartz or fluorite in front to block EMF. Okay, I'm all about the science, all right? I don't like using silicates on my desk, because this is mostly where I work in front of my laptop, for the purpose of shielding from computer electromagnetic frequencies. Because from a scientific point of view, it makes no sense. You can measure slight differences with other minerals, but when it comes to silicates, those containing silica dioxide, silicon dioxide would be what your quartz is made out of. Keeping it in front of your computer or around your modem for the purpose of shielding, uh -uh, not in my book. Um, this particular black tourmaline is always in front of me, between me and my laptop. I have it over here on the side right now because I, I just have, I have a couple other pieces here that I wanted to um, showcase, do show and tell with you today. So when I have it in front of my laptop, I'm transmuting that electromagnetic radiation coming off the laptop. Is it 100% foolproof? Of course not. No, it's not. I've tested other crystals and things though, and when I tested black tourmaline, I get good results. It's not the best thing. It's not going to completely mitigate that energy, but it's one thing I can help do to dull it, okay? I hear people say, oh, put a piece of fluoride, put a piece of selenite, put citrine in front of your laptop. Those are silicates, and silicates amplify that energy. I mean, think about it. We use silicon chips in our electronics and quartz tuning forks in our electronics to make them more effective, right? So it's an intensifier of that energy. Is that what we want in front of devices that we're trying to shield ourselves from? I don't want to strengthen that energy. I want to block it, right? So if you're looking for 
information on using, specific information on using crystals to help lower your exposure to electromagnetic frequencies, click on the link in the description box below. You're going to go to that accompanying blog post I told you about earlier to this topic. And I've linked to that post lots of related links and blog posts and resources there and things that um, I've posted about before a lot in depth on that topic. Now, let's talk about what a great grounding stone black tourmaline is. The surface of our planet, of Mama Earth, is covered in free electrons, which are very attractive to us. We are made of water, mostly water and minerals. That's it. That's, that's it. We're water and minerals, okay? And those free electrons are attracted to us. Of course they would be. So if we allow them to be. This is a beneficial thing. We like that. We want that. Unfortunately, in our society today, we're usually well insulated from these beneficial, helpful free electrons. Okay, it's the way we live, most of us. Maybe not everybody. Um, we wear mostly rubber soled shoes and we're walking around on carpeted or tiled floors. So these are all insulators. If you remember back to your physics class, these are things that insulate from electricity. So there's very little, if any, direct contact happening. And we're depriving ourselves from Mother Earth's balancing, restorative energies. That's why people talk about earthing to get out there and barefoot grounding. And if you're in a cold climate, put your bare hands on a live tree, okay? Take your gloves off, bare hands on a live tree. Tree hugging is a thing, scientifically proven, that will help you to gather up those free electrons and neutralize your energy. Ancient civilizations or ancient peoples who live in ancient ways are very aware of this and know to monitor the cycles and to stay closely connected to the planet. It brings your circadian, circadian rhythm back into balance. Being in tune allows us to naturally regulate our bodily functions of all kinds and feel plugged in. Being grounded means dissipating any excess energy like positive ions that we pick up from working in front of electronics and being on our phones all day and all that stuff is heavy duty positive ions. We don't want positive ions built up. You need to dissipate that excess energy to the ground. Think of it as like a grounding wire. We use grounding wires in our homes and buildings to protect and dissipate the excess energy. Okay, black tourmaline, here's another specimen, is my go-to stone for grounding. In fact, I have what I call a sacred grounding trio. It's black tourmaline, smoky quartz, and hematite. Those three together are a powerhouse to get really grounded. Okay. All right, again, you know I'm into educating our crystal family. If you'd like to help me with that mission, I'd be so grateful. Just like, comment, and share this video into as many places as you can think of. Doing that tells YouTube to promote my video even more so the video gets out there. People learn about it and they know about it. And then remember to subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. All right, next we're going to talk about the chakra associations, some black tourmaline geology some black tourmaline physics, and it's not gonna be boring, believe me, you're gonna to wanna to know about this because this is what makes black tourmaline so special. And I'm gonna do the three signed book giveaways today for these because they're gonna become collector's editions. I'm gonna get rid of this cover, we're getting a new cover and I will sign them for you. So to enter, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel. So just because you're here, you're not subscribed. You need to make sure you're subscribed and you have to have commented on my last video. The last video was the FTC crackdown on crystal sellers. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So go comment there now if you haven't done so already. And if you're subscribed and then you're entered and I'm gonna announce the winner of one of the three books here live at the end. And we're gonna do the Q&A, okay? Remember, if you want more, you like this information, you wanna dive deep, please click on the link in the description box below because that's gonna take you to the accompanying blog post to this topic where you're gonna get all the links to my extra resources, past blog posts I'm referring to, and you can sign up for my newsletter while you're there. Okay, let me just drink a little water and we'll continue on with the chakras. Okay, I see a whole bunch of you subscribing. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so black tourmaline 
here's a nice little pendant of black tourmaline. Something happened to it, and I'm going to tell you about that. Um, black tourmaline is associated with the root chakra, which most of us know where that is. It's at the base of our spine or right specifically at the perineum and the earth star chakra. So um, the root, ch root chakra is associated with all things foundational to us, including our sense of safety and security and not feeling vulnerable. Um, it's all about the fundamental things that we need for survival, okay? The earth star chakra is not one of the same seven main chakras where we're talking about the seven main ones that run along the spine. Earth star is located about six inches below your feet. So it's a transpersonal chakra, it's an energetic spot, all right? And the earth star is the one that really keeps us connected to mama earth and grounded, so it makes sense, right? Okay, so now let's get into a bit of the geology. Now, much of the black tourmaline, black tourmaline comes in lots of places, comes from lots of different places. Um, comes from China, Pakistan, Africa, Brazil, um, places in the US. Maine has a really nice uh, tourmaline mine. They even have, um, I think it's called Tourmaline Springs, where the, the spring water is marinating in tourmaline and other minerals, and it bubbles up to the surface and they sell the water. Um, I would really love it if they put it in glass bottles, but Tourmaline Spring, that's in Maine. Uh, California, there's other locales, but that's where most of the black tourmaline comes from. It has a Mohs hardness of seven to seven and a half. And here's what's weird. You know how I usually wear that amethyst pendant? I don't have it on today, but I usually, like 80% of the time, have that on. And I was wearing this pendant alongside it, okay? Not thinking, they're both about the Mohs, same Mohs hardness, and one knocking against the other. I don't know if you can see it here. In the, let me see if I can get One knocking against the other really did a number on this black tourmaline. Can you see all those chunks that were knocked out of it? It used to be a beautiful terminated, look at the termination there, uh, black tourmaline, and it really got beat up because I was sleeping with it and everything. Not a good idea. So those of you who took my... Um, Crystal Savvy class elective, um, know about Mohs hardness and how to identify crystals based on Mohs hardness. So they have about the same Mohs hardness. So you, it's not a good idea to have one sitting next to another and knocking into each other because they're going to bang each other up. So uh, chemically, black tourmaline is pretty complex. If you look at the chemical makeup of it, it's pretty insane. So I'm not even going to go through the list of all the elements that are included in there. There's a lot of different elements. But so it's a complex iron containing aluminum borosilicate. That's the simplest way I can put it for you. Okay. If you're really curious, Google it. You'll see all the elements in there. There's quite a bit. And black tourmaline can be highly lustrous like this specimen and form in beautiful crystals like this one, double terminated. Look at this, double terminated. Not all the time. So this is considered a high quality, beautiful, aesthetically pleasing specimen of black tourmaline. Okay, it can also form as tiny little jam-packed needles inside of a quartz crystal, and that's known as tourmalinated quartz or tourmaline quartz. But I'm gonna tell you right now, those, here I get up on my, all right. I gotta put this out there. A lot of those are faked, all right? When you look at tourmaline quartz, it's clear quartz with the black fibers in it, right? And usually, tell me in the comments if you have one, usually it's a cut and polished point, okay? And guess what? Usually they are straight up scam fakes because some people have gotten really good at recreating those in the lab. They know that they fetch a good amount of money. A lot of people are looking for them and love them. And so they fake them. And I've seen lots of those faked in Tucson. Um, so what do you think about that? All right, so the high quality kind of tourmaline as opposed to this kind, this kind is not considered high quality. This kind is, but guess what? Energetically, they're the same. So don't get hung up on, I need to get myself one that's double terminated and beautiful and lustrous and not splintery looking. It doesn't matter, okay? 
a lot of the black tourmaline mines have been closed, the ones that produce this really high quality. And this happened about, I don't know exactly, but I noticed that it started drying up on the market about six, seven years ago. Okay. The specific mine that this piece came out of was in China and that one has closed. So they no longer have large specimens in the same quality. So this is considered A grade, no longer easily available. If you do find it, it's probably, you know, something that's been resold out of someone else's stash, someone's collection and estate sale. It's going to have a price tag to reflect its rarity and its quality. Okay. The usual kind that you're seeing out there is like this. Okay, more spindly, very fibrous, and they're fr friable, meaning that it's delicate. Little pieces will just, you know, I have little little crumbs, black tourmaline crumbs here wherever this one sits because it's very friable. So it's more brittle. Okay, but they work just as effectively. All right, just want you to know that. Don't shy away from it because it's, you know, not as pretty. All right. So let's get into some of the physics. Tourmaline has two physical properties, physics properties, pyroelectricity and piezoelectricity. So I'm not going to go deep into those. If you want to go to that blog post, the accompanying blog post in the description below, and there's links there. So quickly, if black tourmaline is put under pressure or a temperature change, it's going to produce an electrical charge an energy that affects the energy around it, right? It's a physics property, pyroelectricity, piezoelectricity. It's one of the reasons why I find black tourmaline to be so effective is that it has those properties. And like I said, I dove deep into those properties in two different blog posts. All of that is linked in the accompanying blog post below. Click the link in the description if you want more info on that. I feel that understanding at least on some level, not that you have to understand it 100% completely. I don't even understand it 100% completely. A lot of science is not understood 100% completely, especially physics and astrophysics. But I think that understanding, at least on some level, the very real power that our crystals have, meaning when I say very real, I'm meaning very 3D kind of power that we can measure, can be scientifically proven, it can be measured is taught in a physics classroom and used in technology. Understanding those properties is the key to two things. One, getting others, especially skeptics out there to accept it as a viable healing modality, okay? Even if you don't care about that, it's a very important thing for moving a technology forward, all right? And then two, two giving crystal healers the confidence that they sometimes lack because they know that the crystals do these things. They've experienced them. We know, but oftentimes, and I've learned this through teaching and certifying people in crystal healing, that there's a big lack of confidence. Understanding these properties all of a sudden gives them a huge boost in that area. They can explain it to others and they're like, oh, okay, you're going to tell me that crystals don't work? Well, what about py pyroelectricity? What about piezoelectricity? Not to mention that the physical properties of certain crystals are highly beneficial to our energy fields. Okay, in the hibiscus moon method that I teach, and a lot of you are students here, I know, I see you, you know this. I teach a very specific technique in detail that allows our hibiscus moon certified crystal healers, our CCHs, to tap into all the power built into these properties. And I teach you more on the physics behind why it works. We involve a physical transducing aspect, allowing it to play a pretty big role in how we do crystal therapy, alongside a lot of the metaphysical properties, of course, too. Okay, so now if you click on the link in the description below, that's going to take you to the accompanying blog post where you can get more resources and sign up for my newsletter. And I appreciate you if you've helped me with my mission to get this info out there to other people. Uh, grow my channel. If you like, comment, and share this video to as many places as you can think of, that's telling YouTube to promote the video even more. And please subscribe to the channel and click that little bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video when I go live. Okay, we're going to do the giveaway and then we'll do the Q&A. How does that sound? All right. So, 
If you didn't comment on that last video, FTC Crackdown, and you're not subscribed, you're not entered. So you have to be both subscribed to my channel and you have to have commented on that last video. Okay. All righty. I'm going to go there now. I go to this site called Sandra Sires, and it's a YouTube random picker. And let's see. I think I have to. Oh, sorry, guys. Give me one second. We are doing this giveaway. I'm just getting slowed down. Just a quick second. I have to grab the link for this video and punch it back into that site. It cleared it out. Okay. If you are the winner, I'm going to name the three winners. If you are one of the winners, and I'm going to write down your names, I want you to email your mailing address to support at hibiscusmoon.com, okay? And I'm writing down the names so we know who those winners are, you know, trying to sneak in and say, I won, <laughs> when you didn't. All right, let's see. Randomly pick a win winner. Diomara Isaac. Diomara Isaac. Congratulations. And this is for uh, an autographed copy of my original cover, Crystal Grids, How and Why They Work. The cover will be changing soon. Okay, one more person. Kelly Oxendean. Congratulations. Oxendean. Kelly. Okay, and one more. Ellen Henry. Congratulations to you three. You've won an autographed copy of my book. All right, I got your names. We are good to go there. All right, let's do some Q&A. Uh, Belinda said, love your giveaways. What, a, what an exciting moment aside from learning new things with you. Oh, thank you, Belinda. That's sweet. And a bunch of congratulations to the winners. Shan, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I love your last name, Raven Moon. I always take so much away from your videos. Thank you for sharing so much with us. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me a reason to do this because it's one of my absolute favorite things to do. So thank you. All right. Lots of congratulations. Renee said, I don't know how to comment. Okay, so for next time, Renee, you have to be, I think, subscribe, subscribed to comment? I think, yeah. No, you have to have a YouTube account to be able to comment, all right? If you don't have a YouTube account, you can't subscribe, you can't comment, you can't do anything. That's the deal. Hi, Debbie. I find tourmaline is most effective. I love it. Yeah, a lot of us do, right, Debbie? Okay, Jody said, did you say not to put black tourmaline near the computer? My computer was cutting out. <laughs> no, I like to have it near the computer. It's a good transmuter and uh, it mitigates that electromagnetic radiation from the computer. So I do like to have it near the computer. Okay. Tess said, I knew it crystals and learned so much from you. Thank you. Thank you, Tess. Linda has a question that I'm not sure I can answer right away. How can you tell if tumbled malachite is real? Um, there's several ways to tell, um, but you really need to do some geological testing. Um, the the go-to method I would go to is do a streak test with it. Um, I teach about how to do that in my Crystal Savvy class elective, so it's something you can check out there um, or just look up how to do a streak test. That would be my first go-to thing. But there's lots of ways to tell. Oh, Boho Beatnik, good point. Uh, Boho said, tourmaline is the best. My entire house is gridded. Yes, I grid our house too, or any place that I'm living in with black tourmaline. I forgot to mention that. Black tourmaline makes a wonderful protection grid, um, whether it's for a space, a room, or the entire home. T. Rose Lover said, I once had a black tourmaline heart necklace. What happened to it? Rob said black tourmaline doesn't transmute, but obsidian does. It does transmute. Yeah, that's what I was just discussing. It does indeed transmute. God is in here um, posting the alphabet. So that's good to know. Thank you, God. <laughs> oh. God, how did you get 
that handle on YouTube, by the way. Jeez Louise, how did you end up with that? Maybe it's really God. It must be. Belinda has her apartment gridded with tourmaline. Yep. And I'm, Belinda, I'm curious to know, how did you do that with an apartment? I know how I would go about doing it, but I would like to hear how you did that. Yeah, I know you meant gridded. Okay, good question, Lori. She said, are the other colored tourmalines as grounding as the black? Like I have watermelon tourmaline earrings in right now. No, they're completely different than black tourmaline. All the different colored tourmalines are a different mineral, different properties, different correspondences. So completely different. Oh, Boho's saying stuff and you reported him? Okay, if I see God show up again, oh, I get it, God, what you are doing. You are so sneaky. All right, you're out. Block and bless. Bye. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's all you got to do is block and bless. All right, how large of a piece do you grid your home with? Actually, before I read, this is funny. About this size, but I would use a specimen like this to do it now. But before I realized that this quality and level of black tourmaline was becoming uh, extinct, I guess, in a way, I gridded my house with four of these buried in the ground. I tried to dig them up and find them when we were moving. I never found them. You know how it is when you dig stuff in the ground, it just, Mama Earth just makes it disappear. It didn't, it didn't um, degrade or like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh. Or in menopausal mind, like Jackie always says, just makes me draw a blank on words nowadays. But you know what I'm talking about. Didn't disintegrate, okay? Because it wouldn't. But I know they were there, but the earth just has a way of moving things and then they disappear. So I could not find them. And I was like, dude, I've got really good turtleines buried in the ground and we're moving. I wanted to take them with me and they were gone, gone, gone. <laughs> and that one's gone. So anyway. Now I would grid with this kind. And it doesn't necessarily even need to be this big, like maybe half of this size. And just to give you an idea, here's my palms. This piece is kind of big, maybe about half that, half that size. Okay. Hey, Lori. Lori's saying I'm a CCH from your course and it's the best thing I've ever done for my business and confidence. Yay, you're so knowledgeable and I look up to you. Thank you, Crystal Blessings. Lori, I look up to you. It's an honor to serve in the way that I do because I get to do it because you guys give me the reason, the motivation, the inspiration to do it because nobody in my real life wants to sit around and listen to me talk about this stuff. They just don't care. They're like, not into it. So thank you guys. Okay, Luna said, can black tourmaline be used for direct gem elixirs? I would not, Luna, I would use the indirect method because there are so many different elements in there and aluminum is one of them. Um, I would not, I would use the indirect method for using black tourmaline. That's what I teach my students, that's how we do it. <clears throat> Jessica said, do you grid at the corners of the house or the corners of the property line? You can do either or, whichever is easier. If you did the property line, I would use bigger chunks of black tourmaline, okay? If you did the corners of the house, um, you can use, you can get away with a little bit smaller, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hey, coffee, new to crystals, love all the science-based info. That's what I'm here for. That's my, that's my gig. Thanks for joining us. Jason said, what's your favorite crystal? That changes, but right now it's been for a while. Ahoite, it's spelled A-J-O-I-T-E. Okay, that's my favorite right now. Super expensive. And I started collecting it before the prices went insane. They were always kind of crazy, but then they went insane. And you guys that have known me a while know my story with Awful White. Okay. All right, Samantha asked a big question. I'm gonna tell you straight up, Samantha, I can't answer that right now. She said, can you explain more of the scientific info, please? If you're talking about specifically the scientific info, I talked about black tourmaline please go to the accompanying blog post, all right? There's a lot of info there. There's links diving into the pyroelectricity, the piezoelectricity, where I go in detail explaining those things. 
In general, that's what I do is teach the science behind crystal healing. And there's a lot that goes along with it. It's not something I can tell you in two sentences, right? So um, my certified crystal healer course dives deep into teaching the metaphysical aspect of working with crystals along with the science of working with them, all right? I hope you can understand how that would work. All right, guys, thank you so much. This was fun as always. I hope you enjoyed this get together chat on black tourmaline and you can use it more effectively now in your lives. Okay. Crystal blessings, everybody. Have a great day. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.